was 26 years old when I was appointed as a lecturer in academia. I was awaiting the results of my master's degree and was writing my very first article. Of course, I wanted to do a good job, but what a challenge. Even though I read many papers while working on my master's, I just didn't get it. I still remember the introduction of my first paper. It sounded like the opening paragraph of a novel. The draft was going forwards and backwards between myself and my supervisors, with track changes everywhere. My poor supervisors. I always saw myself as talented academically, but this publication thing was really daunting and getting the better of me. I spent many, many, many hours on this paper, and it felt like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And then came my very first acceptance email from the editor. That feeling made all the effort worth its while. I realized that using my experience to assist others in getting their work published would make all those hours I spent on my first paper more valuable. It will mean that those hours did not just produce one publication, but they produced multiple publications by many who will walk this road after me. And that is why I decided to turn my experience into something concrete. This video. To export these files in my head into a format accessible to you so you can spend your precious time elsewhere. More of these files can be found on the Research Masterminds website and on this Research Masterminds YouTube channel. In 2020, I wrote the first version of these top tips, which contained 10 tips. In 2022, when I planned a live workshop for the members of the Research Mastermind Success Academy, I expanded it to 14 top tips. So this video will give you a glimpse into my top 14 tips for getting your precious paper published. Share this video with someone close to your heart. Tip number one, follow the reporting guidelines. This is a brilliant tip that I only, embarrassingly, came across, let's say not soon enough. There is a reporting guideline or checklist for almost every study design out there. Experienced researchers with good insight into each study design put together these valuable documents. This means when you are doing a, an observational cross-sectional study or a scoping review, you'll find a reporting guideline or checklist somewhere to guide you in writing your manuscript. I mostly use two websites, um, but you may know of others the Equator Network website and the Critical Appraisal Skills Program, GOSP website, and I leave links in the description box below this video. Tip number two, model others. Download some published papers in your area of research that have used a similar study design as yours. Even better if you can download a few articles published in the journal you are aiming for. Learn from these authors, model what works, and once you are done, you and your work will be a role model for others. Take note of the difference between modeling and copying. Refer to top tip number six, which says never copy and paste for clarity. So if you're writing a scoping review for the JBI Evidence Synthesis Journal, download a few scoping reviews from this journal to get an idea of the end product. This tip does not replace but complements the important top tip number four which says, read the guide for authors carefully. Tip number three, be strategic. There is no need to start writing the research article from the top. In other words, first the title, then the abstract, then the introduction, and so on. You will find a suggested order on the Research Masterminds playlist on publishing your research. And this is explained there step by step. Each of the video on this playlist elaborates on a step starting with deciding on the focus of the paper, then choosing a journal, building an outline, constructing the method section, and so on. Tip number four, read the guide for authors carefully. Read the journal's instructions to authors thoroughly and carefully comply with the requirements. Take note of things like the word count limits, abstract format, cover letter requirements, title page requirements, and the article processing charges. It is deflating to get a paper back two hours after you submitted it. In other words, two hours into your celebrations with a request from the editor to please add line numbers and resubmit. 
To find the guide for authors of your target journal, type into your search engine your target journal name and guide for authors. Some journals refer to this guide as author's guidelines or author's instructions or submission guidelines, but a simple search will get you to this information relatively quickly. Tip number five, be super pedantic, but not perfectionistic. Suppose you submit your manuscript at a near perfect level, free from minor issues and of course, free from big issues as well. In that case, you will increase your chances of winning the editor and reviewers over. If the paper presents as sloppy, the editor and reviewers may think that the science behind it is also sloppy. They lose hope and move their attention to the next paper, and they receive many papers. Employ your eye for detail and ensure consistent use of acronyms and abbreviations of appropriate concepts and constructs, consistent formatting of tables and headings, no typographical and or grammatical errors, good flow of information into each section, and no unnecessary repetition of information. Now, be very careful not to fall into the trap of perfectionism. At some stage, you need to stop reviewing your paper frantically over and over and get to clicking that submit button. Tip number six, never copy and paste. This is dangerous. Don't ever copy and paste text from a published source into your article, not even if you are planning to remove it later. I have heard so many horrible stories about accidental plagiarism. Just don't do it. Tip number seven. Don't try to fit too much in. I know exactly how difficult it is to create a 3,000 word document from a dissertation or thesis. The best papers out there carry a single message which is well elaborated upon. Before you dive right in and start working on your first publication, plan the entire project's papers all at once. In other words, zoom out before you zoom in. A blank piece of paper or whiteboard will come in handy here. Tip number eight, avoid salami slicing. Don't cut your data too thin when planning your project. There's an editorial that describes salami slicing quite well, and I'll leave a link to this in the description box below this video. Each paper is so thin, like the slices of a salami, that the whole purpose of multiple outputs is to bolster an author's CV, their perceived performance, and their scholarly standing, rather than to disseminate research findings with integrity. Find the balance between top tip number seven, which says, don't try to fit too much in, and salami slicing, this top tip number eight. Tip number nine says, stick to the focus. You have done a layout of the papers that will emanate from your project and you decided on the focus of the paper at hand. In other words, the message that you want to convey to your reader. Formulate your objectives and then ensure that you align all sections to these objectives. Remind yourself of this focus throughout the writing process because it's easy to go down a rabbit hole. Tip number 10. Make daily progress. Chances are that you won't finish the process in one day and you'll probably work on this paper over a few weeks or months, depending on the time you have available. Don't leave the paper unattended for more than one day. The longer you don't work on it, the more difficult it is to get back into and the easier it becomes to procrastinate. Tip number 11. Note down the next steps at the end of today. When it's time to call it a day, write down the next steps in the form of a micro to-do list, such as download two articles on the prevalence of injury, or revise the method section, or format a table number three. This way, you will know exactly where you will kick off when you open your laptop tomorrow. When I don't know where to start, I'm much more likely to procrastinate. Having this list of next steps available will help me get started immediately, especially if you are suddenly given a, the gift of time. You know, a meeting gets cancelled, and even if it's only 30 minutes, that 30 minutes that you work on this paper will bring you 30 minutes closer to your submission date, and thus 30 minutes closer to the celebrations. I wrote a blog post on this, and I'll also leave a link to this in the description box below this video. 
Tip number 12. Face writer's block head on. When you get stuck, close your laptop and go do something you love. Not for too long though. Take a walk in the garden, drink a cup of tea, take a refreshing shower or have a chat with a housemate. When you get back and you still don't feel like tackling that document of yours, open a blank document and just start typing or writing. I often get stuck with the discussion and taking a short break helps clear my busy brain. If your writer's block is really severe, a day or two away from your paper may just be what you need. Tip number 13. Create impact. Consider this for a moment. Is it enough to publish your research in a peer-reviewed journal? Yes, publishing is a must so that others can find your work. But are there other ways that you can boost the level of impact? What about sharing your results through a series of presentations to stakeholders? A handout or an infographic? You will know your research area and the potential areas of impact best. Go for it. Change the world. Tip number 14. Add value to the lives of others. Once you have been through this experience, find ways to guide others through this daunting process. Share what you have learned and empower others to get their work out there. The Research Masterminds website and the Research Masterminds YouTube channel contain useful resources to help you make progress on your research project. If you are a postgraduate student working on a master's or a doctoral research project and you are passionate about life, adamant about completing your studies successfully and ready to get a head start on your academic career, this opportunity is for you. Join our awesome membership site. It's a safe haven offering you coaching, community and content to boost your research experience and productivity. Check it out. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button. For more useful tips to boost your research experience, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. And while you're at it, hit the bell so that you get notified whenever I produce a new video. If you need a solution to a challenge not yet covered on my channel, leave a comment in the box below. See you in the next video.